Where does this plug in? Um, let's try connecting that line uh, over to this node. That's not good. There's a lot going on in Blender, and if you're new, it's a lot to learn. I should know. I'm a noob, and I'm really bad at Blender. Oh, guys, that's not that's not the video's title. Can we take that down? Sorry. The title is 10 Tools Every Blender Noob Should Learn. Yeah. I want to talk about the tools that I use most. So if you're just starting out and you're feeling overwhelmed, hopefully this will help. So number one, apply your transforms. When I start off any new Blender composition, I hit Shift A and I start working with a brand new shape. Then I can resize it into any of the basic forms that I need. So if I'm drawing a house or a building, it takes a lot of cubes. Sometimes those cubes are flattened out. Sometimes they're drawn out, made into big rectangles. Sometimes they become a door frame or a window. If I try applying things to those shapes, sometimes it does weird stuff. For example, this plank started out as a cube. If I want to bezel the edges and I hit command B. No, this is wrong and I hate it. It's bezeling it like it's still a perfect cube. The proportions are all wrong. But if I apply transform command A and then I go to add the bezel with command B. Yeah, that is the effect I was looking for. So if something isn't behaving the way I expect it to, often it's because I forgot to apply my transforms. Now my center point is weird. Oh yeah, a little bonus for this one. Sometimes this resets the center point of your shape. I usually don't like where it puts it. So I right click it and say set origin to geometry. Number two, let's talk about the loop cut. The loop cut is a quick and easy way to subdivide any object. I could take those points and move them around and make this shape a heck of a lot less boring. You need to memorize this shortcut. Command Command R, Command R, Command R. Say it with me. You are going to be loop cutting everything. Cubes, cylinders, planes, Goombas. Ah. Also, I should point out, you need to be in edit mode in order to use it. Now, this does work on any shape. When you bring up the subdivision tool, you might have to reposition your mouse to make sure that the cuts are facing in the right direction or the direction you want them to go in. And if you have a mouse wheel, you can scroll up and this will increase how many subdivisions you have going on. Scrolling down will reduce how many you have. Then you choose the position, you click once more, and boom, locks them into place. All right, number three, we're gonna be making some lumber. Is that a metaphor? This is totally a metaphor. When I'm building out a scene and I have a handful of shapes that I'm going to be using over and over and over again, I basically build very simple versions of those shapes that I can use the same way a carpenter would use lumber. It's a lot faster for me to duplicate a board and then resize it to the shape I need it than it is to remake that board every single time. This of course can be any compound shape that you find yourself using over and over again, like a window or a lamp or a book. As a bonus, Blender has some really great import options. I now have a starter file with a bunch of starter assets in it. And so whenever I start a new project, I can just pull in whatever assets I need into that project and I can start building right away with a lot of those pre-built objects already good to go. It saves me a ton of time. Number four, array. Now one of the tabs along the side here has what are called modifiers. There's some really awesome ones in here and you could do just amazing stuff, but I'm gonna talk about my favorite, which is array. Array. array duplicates your shape and you can choose how many times you want it to be duplicated and how much space you want in between each one of those shapes. So these stairs here, I didn't just place them one by one. No, I changed the height and the spacing on the array modifier. These pillars, yep, you guessed it. That's just an array. The roof, that's an array. So you get the idea. I'm gonna throw a bonus in here. When I made these car tires, I used array again. I drew the tire once, I hit array, and then I had my back tire. But then I added a second modifier called mirror. I set the car shell as my object to reference, and then those tires just magically showed up on the other side of the car too. So that way, if I add more detail to the tire at some point in time, it adds that detail to all four of them. I love this. You know what else I love? This new pencil I've been trying out. It's called the Eon from today's sponsor, Stillform. This is not only the most beautiful pencil I've ever used, it writes endlessly. No, really, it comes with different tips that you can swap out magnetically. The eternal tip literally never wears out. It lasts forever and the marks it leaves are smudgeless. That means it's not gonna leave any stains on your clothes and the line that it leaves behind is waterproof. If you are looking for a darker line, you could always switch over to the graphite tip for a more traditional sketching experience if you're going for something that you can smudge and erase. They're even working on a special tip 
that'll work on screens. Now I'm a sucker for beautiful designs. The flat sides add a design accent that also keeps it from rolling off your desk. And it's available in different materials with different finishes and different accents, so you could really customize yours. If you wanna try one of these for yourselves, they have a Kickstarter happening right now where you can get some extra backer benefits and a huge discount. It's well on its way to being the most successful pencil Kickstarter in history. So make sure you check out the link down below in the description and order your still form EI today. Number five, rotating only when you're looking straight on at an object. I got used to this pretty fast because it got pretty messy pretty fast, and this isn't so much a tool as a best practice, but when you're rotating something in 3D, it may look like you're rotating it the way you want, uh, but uh, you're probably rotating it on more than one axis at a time. This was one of the hard things when I was learning how to think in 3D space. So before I rotate anything, I always tap on the X or Y or Z axis first. That way I know that is the only direction that I am rotating this thing and it'll stay flush and smooth on the other axes while I'm doing that. Number six, inset. Say I wanna put a window in my building. I could loop cut it a few times and then push that plane in, but there is a specific tool designed to do this and do it faster and it is called inset. When you have a face selected, tap on the letter I on your keyboard and move your mouse in and out to choose how far you want it to go. Now, once I started using inset, I found all sorts of cool and interesting uses for it far beyond what I originally planned. But in order to really explain that, I have to talk about number seven, which is extrude. Inset and extrude are like peanut butter and jelly, if your PB&J had a hole in the middle of it. Once you have inset something, you can tap on E to extrude it or pull it out. Or you can push inwards on that as well. Once I started using these two things together, the number of things that I could model expanded exponentially. I want to make a pipe? Cool. I extrude the top scale it out, extrude it again, then I inset the top and I extrude it again, but this time I drag down on it. It's a thing of beauty. Number eight, materials are hard. How do I cheat? Oh, I got the lights on again. Great, what'd you do? No idea. Confession, I am still epically confused when it comes to applying textures to my models. I've gone through a lot of tutorials, so I get the gist of it. I understand how these things work, but if you said, hey Brad, could you apply a material to this object? I can't do it without a tutorial. You'd mess up the lights. I'd mess up the lights, you're right. So I use the cheat mode. In most of my models, I'm just adding colors and things like that using the materials side panel. I can color things from here and I can also change the parameters. If I wanna make something look metallic or kind of plasticky, I, I can do that right here. This is obviously really, really basic. You're not gonna do anything advanced here, but if you're just learning the program, I find tackling these things in bite-sized chunks is a pretty good idea, so you're not overwhelming yourself. All right, number nine. Let's make moving the camera easier. When I first started, when I wanted to change my camera view, I would move the camera up or down, and then I would change the rotation and the angle of it, and then I go to the preview and see how far off I was, and then I go back and I do it again. And it was a huge waste of time. What a bad idea. Instead, what I do now is I tap on my camera view, and then I go to this tab on the right. In view lock, there is this little checkbox that says camera to view. Now I can move around my camera, and wherever I end up is what what my camera is pointed at. It takes a couple seconds instead of a couple minutes. And when I want to go back to working, I just uncheck that checkbox and just start moving around again. Easy peasy. Number 10 is speeding up your renders. Now I love peeking and seeing how my image is turning out while I'm working on it. I also like working with the rendering engine cycles, which as you probably know, takes up significantly more computer resources than Eevee, which is the rendering engine that's on by default, but it looks so good. It looks so good, you guys. There's nothing I could do to speed up that, but there is something I can do when I hit F12 to render out that final image. Because it could take several minutes to actually render that, and bless your heart, if you're doing an animation, we gotta speed that up. In the rendering properties, the default rendering passes is 4,000. Every single one of those 4,000 passes is making the image a little bit crisper each and every time. But right now, I'm, I'm just posting this stuff to social media. I don't need 4,000 passes to get a good looking image, so I'm gonna knock this down to 10. Yes, I said 10. I know it sounds crazy, but just try it. When it's done, it actually looks pretty good and it's gonna save you a ton of time. And if you don't like the quality and you want more, that's totally fair. Just bump up those passes to 20 or 30 or 50 or 100. Whatever it needs to make you happy, it's still gonna be way faster than 4,000. So those are my 10 Blender tips. What are your tips? What's gonna help me out? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.